Hello guys, Sujari speaking. Welcome to LJP Reacts episode number 911. This is uh, 11 out of the 100 to 1,000th episode uh, special countdown. And today we have to uh, the Fairy Out Gamer episode number 50, the real 50th episode this time around. Sonic Colors. We have to this beginning in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Very odd gamer and Sonic Colors. Continue on. Call title card designed by Joey. I can't pronounce that. Sorry, Wagoner. Okay, mixed book. Anyway. Hello, internet viewers. I'm the Fairly Odd Gamer. Sonic has been around for 30 years, as some of you may know. Wow. I have to talk about every era of the Blue Blur. So mm. far, I've covered the Dreamcast era, as well as a few games from the classic era with Sonicify. But for this review, mm. I'll be talking about the modern era of Sonic. Mm -hmm. Let's say... 2008 onwards. Okay. After the massive dumpster fire that was Sonic's 50th anniversary, primarily mm. Sonic 06, that almost killed the mm -hmm. Sonic franchise, it wasn't until 2008 when Sonic Unleashed was released for the Xbox 360 and PS3. It had awesome graphics, fast-paced gameplay, and a compelling story to boot. There was also a version on the Nintendo Wii, which is basically a neutered version of the HD version. Speaking uh -huh. of which, the Nintendo Wii became a huge impact when it comes to Sonic, as well as Sega in general. Uh -huh. Besides the previously mentioned Sonic Unleashed, the two games from the Storybook series didn't really reach mainstream success, mm. except for Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, in which Sonic went up against his longtime rival Mario. Mm. Literally. It mm. then led to him becoming a new fighter in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, making Sega fans wanting to buy a Nintendo Wii. Exactly. So because of this, the next mainstream Sonic game would only be released for the Nintendo Wii. Mm -hmm. That game is Sonic Colors. Wow. Hey, hey, hey! Sonic, you're back! Glad to be back, gamer. Whoa! So you're about to review Sonic Colors, right? That's awesome, gamer. I hope you enjoy it. Will do. However, I'm going to do something a little different. Wait, what do you mean? For mm. this review, I'll be using footage from the newly released remastered version, Sonic Colors Ultimate for the Xbox One, while comparing it to the original Wii version. Okay. Oh, now that wow. sounds interesting. Okay. 11 years after the original game was released, Sega and Sonic Team decided to remaster Sonic Colors for modern consoles. Wow. And this year, Sonic Colors Ultimate was revealed via Sonic Central live stream. Think of it as Sega's answer to Nintendo Direct Stream. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but the Blue Blur also started its own animated movie called Sonic Colors Rise of the Witch. Wow, makes sense in a way. Continue on. Art and animator Tyson Hess. Mm -hmm. If you managed to pre order a physical copy of the game, then it would come with a baby. Wait! Really? If you watch this remix for you, buddy, continue on. But, because I didn't want to go for the keychain, I instead decided to pre-order the digital deluxe version with extra features including the movie Sonic book. Oh, so that explains why you don't have a physical copy. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. So, was Sonic Colors still a good game as it was over a decade ago? Let's find out. Mm -hmm. We already know who's behind the original game, but the remastered version was developed by Blind Squirrel Games, a company mm -hmm. best known for Bioshock the Collection, Mass Effect Legendary Collection, and a Switch port for WWE 2018. Wow. We saw the initial cutscene while listening to the opening theme, Reach for the Stars by cast cast member John Paul McLaughlin. Whoa, okay. Makes sense. You could say that it sounds familiar to what was played during the Sonic Symphony, but it turns out that it is the version heard from the Symphony. Wow. Moya Otani confirmed on his Twitter that the version he played for the Symphony wait, 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 wait. was made Pause specifically that. for this game. I also like the original. Hold on, pause that. Here's a short comment from the regarding the songs we play on the Sonic Orchestra. The new version of Reach of the Stars is called Reach of the Stars Three Colors. Was made especially for the Sonic Stars Colors Ult Ultimate. Excuse me, continue on. That the person you play for the symphony was made specifically for this game. I also okay. like the original version with the fast paced beats just to get you hyped up for this game. Wow. Anyway, the game starts right away with the first zone of the game, Tropical Resort. And yeah. here's my first problem with the Ultimate version. Since I'm playing the Xbox One version at 60 frames per second, it doesn't run as smoothly as the original version. 
It's mm-hmm. almost like it lags once in a while while trying to load the level. Other than that, I love how Sonic Speed is used in this game by means of the boost mechanic. Which I believe started out in Sonic at least, but I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. Which can make you go faster than the speed of light. But be sure to use your boost wisely because the longer your boost, the more your boost mirror drains out. You can increase your boost mirror by finding these white aliens or attacking enemies whether by use of the hunting attack or boosting through them. Mm-hmm. In addition, there's rail grinding, the ability to double jump, which kind of made a turn from Sonic R, mm-hmm. and new items called Red Star Rings, allowing you to unlock more content. Mm-hmm. More on that later. Yeah. But I do want to point out that there are five Red Star Rings per state. Yeah. They're easy to find, but other times you may need certain whips to reach those rings. There's also Dash Rings that give you a speed boost, Rainbow Rings that give you a bonus, and Rainbow Dash Pads that allow you to trick jump while mid-air by button mashing. And also that song's current voice actor, Roger Craig Smith, say this. Finally, there's wow. a new feature in the Ultimate version called Park Tokens, allowing you to purchase customizations to Sonic and answer content like character icons. The level wow. ends whether by passing through a gold ring or by destroying an alien source facility, freeing them in the process. After completing a stage, you then rank based on time, rings, and extra items found in the stage, with an S being the highest rank. You can mm-hmm. even earn more rings and even extra life by literally destroying the test. Is that awesome or what? Wow. When the stage is completed, you're then sent to the world map, allowing you to progress throughout the game. And Time reminds me of Mario difference. Continue on. And let's get on with the story. Dr. Eggman has managed to create and build an interstellar amusement park with five other planets bound to one another. I guess I can see why I took inspiration from Sonic the Fighters. But mm-hmm. why, you may ask? This amusement park has been constructed entirely out of a sense of remorse for my past transgressions and is in no way associated with any sort of evil plot or premeditated misdeeds. Liar! With Sonic being, well, suspicious about the whole thing. Obviously. Sonic mm. tells around at the park to investigate. It's here where you find a couple of robot minions. Enter Orbot and Cubot, with mm-hmm. Orbot looking different from his at least date. And no, I haven't reviewed that game yet. Mm-hmm. They're here because they're trying to catch these aliens for Dr. Eggman's deeds. Mm-hmm. Just what kind of deeds? More on that later. Mm-hmm. Sonic manages to save these aliens as one of them absorbs Sonic, giving him a laser-like power. So uh-huh. yeah, these aliens provide Sonic a special limited power throughout the game. Oh, mm-hmm. and before performing a power-up, Roger announces that very power-up. Like this one, for example. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. Don't worry, you'll be hearing Roger announcing different powers for almost the entire game. Uh-huh. Anyway, the laser power allows Sonic to zip through everything and even destroy enemies in sight. Mm-hmm. You can even ricochet by diamond-like obstacle and even zip through laser paths along the way for a shortcut. Uh-huh. We find out that Dr. Eggman is up to his evil trick as he plans to catch these aliens in order to use them as a power source for world domination. Mm-hmm. But luckily, Sonic has come by to save more aliens. Who are you calling nothing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Since the boss said nothing will stop me, and Sonic here is going to stop him, it's like the boss was calling Sonic nothing. This wow. Is the first boss of the game, the Rotatron. At least that's what the internet says. Mm. It holds a Ferris wheel of platforms as Sonic tries to defeat the eye of the robot. Mm. Beat a couple of times, whether by a homing attack or wisp ability, the Rotatron is destroyed, resulting in a plethora of rings. Wow. Oh, and Sonic pulls an MJ moonwalk. Mm. So the wow. small creature that Sonic saved earlier is called a Yapper, as we find out that these aliens are actually called Wisps. Wisps? No, Wisps, with a W. Mm. Yeah, I'll just stick with aliens if that's okay with everybody. And that's exactly wow. what they do. And before moving on, I must point out that Sonic and friends are provided by different voice actors. Besides the previously mentioned Roger Craig Smith as Sonic, we also have mm. Tails, voiced by Kate Higgins, before voicing Paul Lee in Super Mario Odyssey, as well as singing the game's theme song, Jump Up Superstar. Wow. Orbot, voiced by Shadow's current voice actor, Kirk Thornton, Cuba, voiced by the Riddler himself, Wally Winger, and finally, Eggman, voiced by the one and only Mike Pollock. Even though he mm. started out with the 4Kids game, I still think his performance works really well here. Anyway, mm. we move on to the next area of the game, Sweet Mountain. Wow. Just about it makes me hungry because it looks so freaking delicious. Mm. Ice cream, cakes, lollipops, cookies, crackers, licorice, it's all there. Donuts. Is there anything that mm. you can't do? It's here where we find two more wisps, each providing a new power-up. Hey! The yellow wisp giving Sonic the ability of... Drill! And when Sonic wow. can drill through the ground by means of a shortcut or finding extra goodies. Mm. And then there's the orange wisp with the ability of... <laughs> launching Sonic into potential high mm. ground. And before I forget... This is also the first area in which you can drift on curves. Well, it's more like a racing game, but without the racing part. 
and not even in a car. Fox finds an electric generator as well as a pirate themed Eggman ship run by the next boss of the game, Captain Jelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just going with the internet for these names. Anyway, in this battle, you have to stop the ship from being a giant squid and constantly use the homing attack on Captain Jelly until he's destroyed. Hmm. But after disarming the generator, we get more info about these wisps and what Eggman is trying to do with them. Apparently, the energy hmm. source inside the wisps that gives Sonic his power is something called Hyper Goa. Hmm. Like a battery? No. Well, sort of. At first, they're light source. But then you only got a taste of it. Look at what happened. The battery is sort of an understatement. Anyway, it seems an evil man, and you might know him, who they call Baldy Nose Hair. <laughs> Baldy Nose Hair? That's the best thing I've heard all day. I gotta remember that one. Yeah, that's another thing to talk about here. The game's writing. The mm. main writers for this game are Ken Ponak and Warren Graff, who are actually writers for a cartoon show called Happy Tree Friends. I'm mm. sure some of you out there are familiar with that show, but I have no prior knowledge about that show at all. I have the degree of remix and me and this, and Lucas at this point. Excuse me, Lucas at AK okay, Gamer and Remix Plum at this point. Continue on. I was saying, the overall writing is a mixed bag. Some people like the writing style with its fast, quirky humor that kids of all ages would enjoy, and there are others that absolutely despise the overall writing. Uh -huh. There are a few jokes that work really well, but other times, yeah, they're trying too hard to make the joke work. Personally, I'm more in the middle. I think some of the character interactions work well for a Sonic game, but some of the jokes put in aren't that funny to me. Yeah. I really did like the Bolly Nose Hair line as a kid. Yeah. Those were good times. Mm. <laughs> Baldy nose hair. Wow, I still find it funny even today. I feel you, Sonic. Mm. I also enjoy listening to Dr. Edmund's announcements from the intercom, even though I can't hear it as much because I spend most of my level time boosting. Mm. But if you're playing it slow, then you might be able to get some enjoyment out of them. On to the next area, Starlight Carnival. Mm. Look how bright and colorful this level is. It can almost make your eyes water. Not only do you have this quick step ability for both mock speed sections, and trying to destroy motor bugs by running into their sides before pushing them out of the way, uh. we were also introduced to the Blue Wisp with the amazing power of... <laughs> it allows Sonic to turn blue rings into solid bricks. It wow. is not really that useful in my opinion. But that's not all, because we also have the Green Wisp with the power to... <laughs> Sonic can temporarily fly, and boosting your trail of rings allows you to perform the light speed dash. You know, for the adventure games. Mm. And Sonic Heroes. And mm. Sonic 06. You know, why couldn't the Lightspeed Dash be part of Sonic's moveset nowadays? Mm. Sonic and Tails find another generator, only to have Eggman capture Tails via an alien-powered mind control beam, which doesn't last long at all. As Eggman mm. finds more aliens to capture, it leads to the wow. next boss level, the Brigade Orca. It's an airship armed with a machine gun that fires energy bullets, as well as dropping crates containing rings, wish power-ups, and spiked mines. Stay away from the spiked mines. You can defeat it the same way as the Rotatron, either with mm. a homing attack or using a wisp ability, like a laser. Mm. After defeating the boss, mm. Sonic once again disarms another generator. Mm. Since we know that Eggman is using the alien energy for a mind control weapon, how exactly is he getting all these aliens? Yeah. Eggman is using five tractor beam generators to hold their planet in orbit while he scoops the aliens all up. Hold the whole planet? Well, it's tiny, but still, yeah. Well, that can't be good. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, in Eggman's base, Eggman plans to capture more aliens in order to have Sonic's world under his mind control cannon. Oh, and remember Orbot and Cubot from before? Yeah, there's also a side mm -hmm. plot of Cubot trying to get his voice chip fixed. Uh -huh. This just shows what other voice involving Winger can do. Anyway, after completing Star Carnival, you can feel free to choose whatever you want to go. So let's do Planet Wisp next, the home of the Wisps. While the atmosphere looks beautiful, don't be fooled because there's still dangerous obstacles to avoid. Wow. Here we find the pink wisp, which allows Sonic the ability of... <laughs> it allows Sonic to climb up walls and even up the ceiling if needed. If you hold mm. the boost button in this form, it allows you to perform the spin dash. Uh -huh. You know, from almost every Sonic game imaginable. Seriously, why hasn't this power up when it's usually natural for him at this point? Uh -huh. And before I forget, I love the music in the original Wii version. Some of my favorite tracks include the Act 1 themes for Tropical Resort, Aquarium Park, mm. and this level, Planet Wisp. And even the game's mm. theme song, Reach for the Stars, and Speak With Your Heart, performed by Cash Cat. Mm. I'll talk about Speak With Your Heart when I get to it. 
Mm. However, the ultimate version includes a remix of the first three stages in the game, as well as the music from the original version for the last two stages of each level. Uh -huh. You know, just to even the playing field. Mm. Personally, I don't find the remixes as enjoyable as the original track. Just not my cup of tea for me. Yeah. So why did I say the Planet Witch was dangerous? Because Eggman plans on transforming it as part of a theme park. Mm -hmm. well, looks like the theme of his park is universal domination and the conquest of alien races. It's more than a theme, it's a reality. He's using them like some kind of living intergalactic acid. That literally describes the entirety of Eggman's plan in a nutshell. So Sonic tries to stop the renovations as he comes across the next boss of the game, the Refreshinator. Uh, Eggman, Dr. Jiffin's first call. The ones he's invented. Yeah, I saw my be as a first show. Continue on. But this also leads to, in my opinion, the most memorable line in the entire game. No copyright law in the universe is going to stop me! You know, it sounds like something that, oh, I don't know, a Gorky the Pickle Hog would say. Could we well, not talk about him, please? Okay, um, how about some art? Well, at least he doesn't look like my sleep paralysis demon. Anyway, mm. it plays the same as the Rotocharm boss, except with lasers and circular platforms. Without saying much, Sonic defeats the Refreshinator and frees the alien planet. We then head on to the next area, Aquarium Park. Not only do I love the original music for this level, as mentioned before, but I also like the underwater aesthetic of the level. Mm. Again, it's beautiful to look at. Mm. And here's something cool. If you boost near a body of water, you can actually run on water the same way Dash does in his level. Wow. And while he is given the ability to swim by repeatedly tapping the jump button, he still needs air bubbles in order to breathe. Yes. So Sonic once again finds another generator as he encounters another submarine contained by the next boss of the game, Admiral Jelly. Mm. It's literally the same boss as the one from Sweet Mountain, with the addition of homing missiles while traversing underwater. So be sure to get in some air bubbles whenever you need them. Anyway, defeating Admiral Jelly shuts down the generator as Tails returns from this bucket of sushi. So, mm. what did he think of it? His cruelty knows no bounds. I guess you could say he also described the chum bucket. Wow. And on we have the asteroid coaster. It only fit because it starts off on a roller coaster in an asteroid like setting. Mm -hmm. And it's here where you found the purple wish, or the mega wish, providing Sonic the last power up in the game. <laughs> it turns you into a demonic looking Pac Man in which you gobble everything in sight to a point where you can suck up everything. While I enjoy using his ability in the 2D section, I don't like using him in the 3D section. The slipper is all get out, and it's hard to move even trying to gobble up everything. So Sonic and Tails come across a factory of some sort, where they find mm. all the captured whips and turn them into the negative energy that Eggman needs for his world domination plan. And when Sonic finds the last generator, mm. they see mm. another boss jet, the Brigade Scullion. Same boss fight as Dalai Chronicles, so let's just move on. Mm -hmm. Hey, we both deserve some kind of reward. Yeah, let's go to an amusement park or something. All oh, right, but uh, one that's, you know, less evil than this one. Mm. How about Sega Toy Plus from Japan? I heard they're doing well. Mm -hmm. Hey, dude, did someone say amusement park? Huh? Hey, hey, Hux, long time no see. Uh. Yeah, dude, it's been like five months since we last met. That still counts. Anyway, what's mm -hmm. been happening? Not so much, but I've always wanted to go to a music park. It has everything. The ride, the food, all the fun I could have. That sounds like a fun place to go to. You know, Huxon Gamer, I heard that there's the possibility of a new Sega Joy Police in the UK, and maybe in the US. Wait, really? Yep. And it may include an appearance from a certain blue hedgehog. Dude, mm -hmm. that's awesome! I definitely want to go there! Mm -hmm. Anyway, just want to check and see what's up. Later, dude! Mm -hmm. Wow. Makes sense. With the last generator disabled, all the chains connected to the theme park disappear as if they were snapped by Sonic wearing Thanos' insanity gloves, leaving the aliens free from Eggman's scratch as Sonic and Tails head back home. At least, that's what they want you to think in regards to the game being over. Mm -hmm. But nope, Eggman has harnessed enough energy to power up the mind control cannon only to have it backfire via detonation. Michael Bay explosion! Hooray! Or Debo explosion! Continue on. Every direction, even towards the moon. Yeah, I'm not going for Zuka-san's good side of the moon explanation. Mm. As a result, the uncontrolled energy transforms into a massive void. Oh, and Kiwa's voice chip gets fixed, so good for them. This leads to the final area of the game, Terminal Velocity. Sonic and Tails do the mm. ground runway as well as the fleeing wish, which tells him to run back to the mm. space elevator and get out of this place. 
Mm. This level is much different from the other levels in this game. It's an enemy rush in which you avoid obstacles and destroy enemies in your path as they make their way to the space elevator while trying to not get sucked into the void. However, they still have another Eggman to defeat. Mm. This time in a flying armor ship made from the negative wisp energy contained from captured aliens. Wow. There are no lines, and I saved the best rides for last. At least let mm. me stab your hand so you can come back in. Wow. I know you're trying to be clever with this whole amusement park pun thing, but it's just coming off lame. Hang on. Okay, David, if you're watching this, um, I <laughs> can't wait to see the final part of episode number three of Pepper and Jokes. Continue on. Just say you're going to destroy us and stop embarrassing yourself. Curse you, Sonic! Not only do you foil my plans, but you foil my speeches as well! I work hard on them! See, even I'm aware of how cliche Eggman's speeches are. They're pretty much the same thing every time. All this leads to the final boss of the game, the Negative Wisp Armor controlled by Dr. Eggman. Since he now uses Negative Wisp Energy, he only uses three of the Wisp Power-ups. Mm. Laser, Spike, and Cube, in order to beat Sonic. Oftentimes, he can trick you by combining cubes and either Spike or lasers at the same time. Mm. Eventually, Sonic can jump over laser beams and Spike balls, as well as avoiding cube barriers via Quick Step. You can inflict damage onto Eggman by destroying the armor via a homing attack, letting out a wisp of each color. Once all seven color wisps are obtained, Sonic can defeat Eggman once and for all with a final color blaster. One color blast later, and Eggman is ejected from his armor, hurling into space and into the void. But it's not over yet. The wow. The are destroying the entirety of the amusement park, including the space elevator with tails inside. Because of this, Sonic has to quickly master the Joestar secret technique. Wow. But alas, it's too late. Sonic is now in the void, unconscious. But somehow, some way, I managed to survive this whole fiasco. While the Wisps were trying to stop the void from getting any bigger, Yakker and a few of his buddies came by to rescue me from said void and transported me back to Earth where I belonged. Luckily, the Nega Wisps turned back to normal as the void vanished completely. Even though Tails managed to get his translator working properly, mm -hmm. it was about time for these aliens to head back to their homes as they also disappeared. And the day is saved, courtesy of me. Yeah, mm. that's gotta be tough. It sure was. But hey, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. You got a point mm. there. Mm. Again. The game is probably my favorite song in the entire game, Speak With Your Heart from Cash Cat. Wow. I love this song from the original version. Not only does it rock, but it also reflects the plot of Tails fixing the Wisp Translator on his handheld. It's just amazing. As mm. for all Wow. Well, the rainbow version is a complete letdown. The wow. The is better than this. Heck, even the symphony version is better than this. If Breach mm. as far as you the version that was heard in the Sonic Symphony, then why couldn't this? Jesus. Is the worst part. After listening to the main instrumental theme, which ended perfectly in the original version, you have to endure 15 minutes of Sonic jumping around and destroying the text scroll with dead pan silence. Honestly, I thought there was something wrong with my Jesus. Music, but no, the credits continue to roll with no background music. I get it, there's more people at work in the ultimate version, but that doesn't mean you can't add in more music. How about using music from the stages? Tropical Resort, Planet Wisp, Aquarium Park, those can work just fine. Uh -huh. But before I forget, the sound quality completely blows. While trying to edit the footage for this review, the audio coming from a different earpiece began to disorient me from a train of thought. Mm -hmm. Which is why I changed the audio quality of my footage from stereo to mono while editing. Okay, makes sense in any way. Continue on. Right side, we get at the credit scene in which Eggman is stranded in space alongside Orbot and Cubot, who is now happy to have his normal voice back, mm. even though he does sound annoying. 
Mm. And that concludes the story mode for this game. Now, on to the other modes! Mm -hmm. Remember what I said earlier about the Red Rings unlocking more content? Well, I'm talking about Eggman's Sonic Simulator. It's pretty much the 2D sections of the game making you feel like you're playing a Sonic game in the Genesis days. Not only can you play as a customized Sonic, but you can also play as your me, only in the original Wii version. If you manage to complete all three acts in the zone, you then nab a Chaos Emerald. And of course, collecting all seven turns you into Super Sonic, which thankfully you can play as in regular stages as opposed to only playing as him in the final boss alone. Other than that, it's pretty much different what I can tell. Yeah. And thus, we've reached the end of Sonic Color. Mm. First, I thought I was... Hey, wait a minute. Isn't there also a version on the Nintendo DS? Oh, that's right! Yeah! I thought it was also made its way to the DS the same day the console version was released. Mm. Let's get a quick look at it, shall we? In a strange, mm. peculiar way, the DS version feels about the same as the console version. Is that... Oh, whoa, 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 hold up. Strange, peculiar way, the DS version... Question mark, and all of a sudden they have numbers on them? Seriously? See you on. Feels about the same as the console version in regards to the story. However, in regards to gameplay, it's mostly the 2D sections from start to finish. Yes. I've heard people say that the DS version of Sonic Colors is the third Sonic Rush game, and they're probably right. Mm. But I haven't played any of the Sonic Rush games yet, so I can't really judge. Yeah. Like the console version, it has a boost meter, which can be mm. filled by finding white wisps or by defeating enemies with your homing attack. Even the boss battles were neutered, but they work pretty well for a DS game. This version also uses the same wisps from the console version, with the exception mm. of two exclusive wisp power-ups. Mm. First there's the red wisp, giving you the power of... <laughs> turning him into wow. a ball of fire! Jesus! Destroy enemies as well as obstacles along the way, and can even perform mid-air jumps. Finally, there's the Violet Wisp with the power of <laughs> not only can you suck up rings, but you can pass through these giant fans that can give them a burst of speed. However, there's one more Wisp that can only be found in the ultimate version, the Jade Wisp. Mm. This gives them the ultimate power of allowing <laughs> Sonic to face to the stage via these jade-colored diamonds. This version also features characters not shown in the console version, such as Knuckles, Cream and Cheese, Big, Amy, Shadow, Rouge, Omega, King Chaotix, even Blades and Silver make appearances in this game. Why? Because this version also includes many challenges in which you have to complete a certain task, such as collecting enough rings, defeating enough enemies, finding enough whips, and even completing the stage before time runs out. Some are easy, while others are actually quite difficult. Like the console version, you find and collect the red rings. But unlike the console version, you now have the Chaos Emeralds not by going through the Sonic Simulator, but through mm. these half-type special stages. By the way, is just me, or do they look similar to Sonic 4 Episode 2? Anyway, you have to gather up enough orbs of a specific color three times in order to snatch the Chaos Emeralds. Yes! Seven Chaos Emeralds equal the ability of Super Sonic, which mm -hmm. is only available for the final boss, which I don't get considering that you can play as Super Sonic on the normal mm. stages in the console version. What a letdown! Well, wow, that down mm. deed. Never thought it'd turn out like that. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. So what'd you think of the game overall? Well, Sonic, if you were to ask me, I actually like both versions. Wow. Well, not one of my favorite Sonic games out there. It did lead a pathway to how current Sonic games are made and handled, particularly the console version. Graphically, I like this version with its vibrant colors and environment. Almost everything you need for a kid's mm. game is all there. But I feel like the original Wii version was much better than the Ultimate version because I feel like the Ultimate version was a bit too bright for my liking. Jesus! The gameplay works about the same way as any other modern Sonic game, boost formula and everything. The Wisp power-ups are pretty good, even though some of them should have been used for Sonic's regular moveset from the get-go. But the drift mechanic can get a little finicky at times. I guess it's fast, but try not making it like a racing game. It's already been done before. For me, the superior console version is definitely the Wii version. Definitely mm. something that is worth your time, effort, and money. Mm. The ultimate version is okay, but it just needs a bit more work. As for the DS version, it's a pretty good handheld rendition of a 3D Sonic game. In fact, why couldn't the ultimate version feature elements in the DS version? Mm. It's like in Super Mario 3 All-Stars in which Super Mario 64 mm. only featured elements from the N64 version, but none for the DS port. Mm. And the same thing applies here. Mm. The graphics look okay, and the gameplay feels pretty good. Overall, I think Sonic Colors is a pretty good game with some mixed elements that I don't feel too strong about. As for which version, 
I can safely say that the Wii version is the superior version of Sonic Colors, with Sonic Colors DS coming mm. to a close second. Exactly. The Sonic Colors Ultimate is ranked at the bottom is mostly because of the problems it had when it was released. Even though I managed to beat the game, I was struggling to get through all the glitches mm. and bugs the game laid out on me. Not age well, but I'm sure you'll have a fun time regardless. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you like Sonic Colors, as well as coming by to once again celebrate 30 years of my life. Well, it's always a pleasure having you here. See you later, Sonic. See you later, gamer. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hey, Sonic. Yeah, gamer? Give us another 30 years of a blue blur. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very radical and very happy for you, Sonic. <coughs> mm -hmm. Not as nice of them. And I'm sorry mm -hmm. that you've so, so long. A lot of things have happened recently. Now that I reach over 11,000 followers on TikTok, but I also managed to reach over 700 subscribers on this channel alone. It really means a whole lot to me. Yeah, I, I was... My application on a four channel was one of the Fairy Art Gamers, um, nine subscribers. So there you go. Continue on. In the holiday season, I must be ready for my annual Christmas review. Yeah. I'm the Fairly Odd Gamer, and I wish you all good luck the rest of your day or night, wherever you are. Take care, everyone. Uh, yeah. The end. How's it going, dudes? Hux Gamer here. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon if you want to get notified for upcoming videos. Well said, Hux. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and some of my character writing on TikTok. Mm. And if you'd like, you can have one of my character writers do a short video for you via video commission. Links to all of those in the description below. Mm. So, without further ado, I wish that one of my character buddies finished with a video. Mm. Hello. I'm the Grinch. It's the holiday season, mm. and I've been given the task to dress up as Saint Nick for this video, and it looks really good. I quite like it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm here to let you all know that you can support the Fairly Yard Gamer on Patreon. Mm. After supporting a chat with fans, as well as other supporters of the channel, have your name featured in the credits, and even watch exclusive content like a sneak peek. Or even watch the review before it gets released. And now, it is my honor and duty to give this month's Patreon shoutouts to Alexander Bode, also known as Wisdom Coach, and the Blast Figure. Once again, thank you all for watching the video and supporting the channel. And I hope you have a merry, holly, jolly holiday season. Well, I do my best this year to not give you the pleasure. So that was the Fairy Odd Gamer. Sonic Colors. Oh man, what did I think about this episode? I think it was amazing. So far this episode was a successful episode overall. And that was a little JP3 Ads episode number 800, 911. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned for the next one, which is going to be LGB Ads episode number 912. Which is going to be about Fairy Out Gamer Home Alone Games. Especially celebrating Christmas in July. Now, my excuse me, I gotta watch uh, Pepper and Jokes episode 3 for you guys to enjoy to be released on my, on my Aussie account. Till next time, Sue Jones and Bobby's favor. Good morning to you guys, guys, be soon. Till then, check out. See ya.
Why me? Why was I the one to see things as I do under the moonlight and the sun? Perception is the question, and the giver holds the key.